Do you drink sparkling water rather than tap water? Do you just want to feel superior to others? Maybe you have more money than sense. Maybe you just want to feel superior to every other pilot on the flight line. Well, you probably got one of these in the mail. Hey everybody, I'm Bacon Ninja, and this is DJI's new O3 Air Unit. And we're going to review it today. No, we're not going to review it today, because this thing has literally been reviewed to death. As soon as it came out, everybody and their brother and their brother's dog, and potentially their pet hamster, reviewed the DJI O3 unit, because it's been pretty long anticipated. We've really been looking forward to this from DJI. It is a huge upgrade when it comes to range, penetration, and pilot video quality, if you have the right set of goggles, as well as the ability to maybe sometimes in some situations not need to carry an action camera on your quad. But one thing that hasn't really happened fully yet is a full list in detail of how to get the thing installed, what are some tips and tricks, what should you be looking for, and how do you make the OSD work, and can I mount it with sticky tape, and how hot does it really get, and all of this in one concatenated blob of thought so that you don't have to go a million places and research it all. So today, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you my biggest tips and tricks for getting this thing up and going if you recently purchased one. And no, you do not have to be some kind of superiority complex, rich individual to own one of these. A lot of people have these that barely can afford the quad it's in. It's just a really good system. I was just kidding at the beginning. Hopefully I didn't offend you. And if I did, leave me a comment below because the internet loves to know when you've offended people. That's the whole point of the internet, right? Let's get down to my list of the biggest tips and tricks I can give you for the O3 system. We're going to be covering things, like I said, of just basic tips and tricks that help you get through it smoother. Things like getting your OSD working, how much power you actually need to look for and what you're looking for in the flight controller to do that. All of the things to make your life simpler. Let's dive into the first one. And the first set of tips we're going to be talking about have to do with this handy dandy flippity floppity cable here that plugs into the port on the O3 air unit itself. This is my Quad Mula Siren F3 split build. It's one of the smallest ways to get a DJI O3 unit in a quad, but it did take some consideration with the cabling. And why is that? Well, it turns out that with the Vista and the old OG air unit, we never really settled on a pinout color code for the cabling. We got a lot of these little six pin cables, the JST cables that came with a lot of things with the Vista and the air unit, flight controller compatible boards came with all these cables, but they were all color coded differently based on what the manufacturer needed. And we used to just solder these to the Vistas. So we didn't really care about the pinout very much. Well, the problem becomes with the O3 air unit that it has a connector on both sides. So that means that you can't just solder this on to the air unit and not care about what's going on the flight controller side and just make it do whatever you need it to do. So the biggest, most important thing when installing your O3 air unit is to check the pinout of the HD port on your flight controller. Each flight controller is different. Each manufacturer will pin out the, the port differently, possibly. It turns out that a lot of times what happens is either it's pinned correctly or it's pinned identically backwards in the wrong order. So you'll put the power where the S bus goes, which is the control link that you can use out of the O3 air unit. And you'll short out the control link if you ever want to use that by basically inverting and shoving power into your control link. So always check the pinout on your flight controller to make sure it's gonna work. Now this is the pinout for the O3 air unit side. And you can see it's pretty straightforward. It goes from power, ground, TXRX, then another ground for signal, and then your S bus wire. You just need to make sure that the other side that connects to your flight controller is properly pinned out. And then if it's not properly pinned out, it is really easy to change on these little JST plugs. You basically just get yourself a very thin implement, it could be metal or plastic, and you lift up the little fingers in this plug, you pull the wire out, and only do it to one side, don't take all of the wires out, do it to one side of the plug, pull all the wires out, put them back in in the right order, and then just take your little implement and push the fingers back down to make sure they're good and seated, 
and you are repinned. But another thing to consider while you're in there looking at the port is how much power you need to run the O3 air unit. It is a little more power hungry than its predecessors. The Vista obviously is a smaller unit and the air unit, even though it is larger, actually didn't require as big a beck as this thing does. So you will need at least a 10 volt, two amp beck. Now you're gonna see a lot of amp and volt specs on becks out there in the DJI or HD plugs of flight controllers. But essentially what you're looking for is 10 volts, two amps. If the voltage is higher than 10 volts in the plug, then the amps can be lower. If the voltage is lower than 10 volts in the plug, then you need more amperage. So if it's a nine volt beck, you really need like two and a half amps. A three amp would be better. If it's a 10 volt beck, then you need two amps. If it's a 12 volt beck, then you know one and a half amps is probably okay. It comes out to a wattage equation. And uh, instead of me doing the math, I'm just gonna flash the number on screen. And basically what you need to make sure of is just that the amps and volts line up to that much wattage for your HD port. Otherwise, when you go to set this thing to its maximum power output, which you don't really do, it just kind of does it on its own, you might black out your BEC and then it might power cycle your HD transmitter and then you will likely crash your quad with your nice high flute and VTX in it. You don't want to do that. Kind of on the same topic of the port and things, a lot of these flight controllers with the DJI port, in fact, all of them that have a DJI port, are going to have some kind of BEC 9, 10, 12 volt BEC in there. And they're also going to have one UART, so a full TX and RX, and they're going to have a second ground because it needs a signal ground, and then they're gonna have an S bus wire because that's what sends out of the DJI VTX is when you want to use the fancy dancy radio because you really want to look better than other pilots on the line. However, you really don't like the control link very much or you would be using something better because the control link for this is actually kind of garbage. It's convenient. It's convenient garbage. I don't recommend you use it. Anyway, there's a UART in there. So let's talk about the UART. Don't think you can just skip hooking up the UART on this. If you skip hooking up the UART, what will happen is that this fancy dancy little quad will arm, and it will arm in low power mode. The VTX will put itself in low power mode where it makes less heat. It just wants to sit at a low heat threshold. But it won't ever know when you arm because you haven't put a UART on it. And because you haven't put a UART on it, it'll never go into full power mode. So you'll never get rid of the little icon in the bottom right that says low power mode enabled. It'll stay there. It won't record. It won't do any of the fun, fancy stuff. It's just gonna stay in low power mode. So it's very important that you hook a UART up to this, even if you're talking about a wing. And if you don't wanna know what I mean by wing, not everybody flies the cool quads like we do. Some people still fly things with wings, but they wanna see from them and they don't always have flight controllers. But you need a UART if you wanna put out the full amount of power from this thing. So you must hook one up. And while you have that UART in there, one of the best things about the DJI O3 system is that it has native MSP DisplayPort OSD. That's a mouthful of words, but essentially it is our Betaflight OSD taken into the digital VTX, sent to our goggles, and then our goggles actually draw that on. They take the data from the MSP feed, which is basically the communication bus inside the flight controller, the MSP communication and programming bus, they send that to the goggles. The goggles write all that data out on our screen in all the places where we tell it to in beta flight. And that's how we get our OSD and the O3 unit supports that natively. But if you just hook it all up, it won't work. If you just plug it in, it doesn't actually work. There are some things that you need to do in beta flight to get it going. And before you head over to beta flight, the first thing you need to do is take a look at your flight controller's diagram. And this is the diagram for the flight controller I have in the quad I have on the bench to show you. It is a SkyStars Mini F7 HD Pro, and this is the DJI port. And a lot of times what you're going to see is it pinned out and wired to something like the Air Unit or Vista. You can see it's represented by this cable color mess here. And no, none of this is written on the flight controller itself. Nothing's printed on the flight controller's pads or the port and the picture is really horrible. And welcome to FPV, where finding the diagram is hard and the picture is always fuzzy. So we just need to zoom in a little bit and see if we can read all the labels on these colors. 
And after zooming in on it, I can see this is on the bottom of the board and from USB side, because that's easy to identify from the top of the board, from USB side to other side, it's 10 volt ground T6 R6 ground S bus. And now I know that my UART in here that's gonna be for my MSP display port is on T6. So T6 R6, I know it's UART 6. Now I need to go into Betaflight and make a couple of changes. There's a couple ways to do this because this video is coming out in kind of a transitionary period. I'm gonna show you how to do it in Betaflight 4.3, but I'm also gonna quickly cover the difference between that and what you need to do in Betaflight 4.4 because it's in release candidate and that's gonna be out soon and this video is still gonna be viable. So let's start with how to do it in 4.3. The easiest way to do it is connect your quad to beta flight with no battery plugged in, go into the presets tab and under categories, select VTX. So you wanna select VTX for the categories. And one of the first ones that comes up over here on the right is FPV.WTF MSP OSD. Let's click that one. Let's pull the option list down and we know that we're gonna be use display port on UART 6. So I'm gonna check that box. And just for giggles, I'm gonna show the CLI and this is what it's gonna type out for us. OSD DisplayPort device MSP, set DisplayPort MSP serial equals five. And there is this nice little string of characters and lines there. There we go, we're gonna hit pick and we're gonna let that write to the flight controller. And now once you power cycle the flight controller, you should have OSD via DisplayPort. MSP will be talking over UART 6 and sending all the data that your goggles need to write on the screen for the OSD. Now, what if Betaflight 4.4 is out and you are now using that? Let's take a look at how to do it in that. And again, you'll connect your quad to Betaflight with no battery connected. And this time we can actually head over to the ports tab because something cool they've added is in this dropdown for peripherals. So we find our UART 6, in this case, I'm just gonna use UART5 because it's a virtual port. Uh, and we're gonna pull this down and we're gonna hit VTX MSP plus display port. So you select that on the UART that's in your plug. You can see it turns MSP on, all those things. We save and reboot that. Let the flight controller reboot. You can connect to it again. And then we're gonna head over to the CLI tab. And in the CLI tab, we're gonna type set OSD underscore display port underscore device equals capital MSP. We're gonna hit enter and then we're gonna type save and hit enter again. And once that reboots, again, everything should work with your OSD in Betaflight 4.4. Now it is probable that the preset I showed you in Betaflight 4.3 will also work in Betaflight 4.4. The difference is some of the stuff they put in there about the serial with all the numbers is not gonna necessarily be the same in 4.4, but there is going to be an updated preset in 4.4, so check that out first and make sure it's 4.4 compatible. But I just showed you how to do it completely without the preset in 4.4, so you can do it without. And now you have OSD. And that's actually one of the biggest complaints that I've heard about DJIO3, or not complaints, but questions, is how the crap do I get my OSD working? Well, now there you go. You don't have to hunt around for it. Now the next group of things that I wanna cover are physical things about the quad. Don't mind my O3 camera dangling around here. But it's actually dangling for a reason. If you take a look at my O3 camera, you can see that it actually has TPU printed side plates. And the reason for that is that there is a gyro in this camera that feeds data into the VTX where either you have rock steady stabilization inside the VTX trying to stabilize, or you're writing gyro data into the video file so that you can stabilize with something like gyro flow, or you're like me and never use stabilization. But that's not everybody, a lot of people wanna stabilize. And if you're going to stabilize, you wanna make sure that you soft mount your camera in some way. A lot of frame designs are having modifications made to them to enable the soft mounting of cameras. So that is a good thing. Just check yours to make sure it's available or that someone has designed some kind of camera plate or camera cage adapter, this soft mount your camera. Otherwise your gyro data will be useless and it will twitch like this. So don't let that happen to you, just soft mount your cameras. Now a couple other things about the physical aspects of frames when it comes to the O3 air unit. There's a lot of trade-offs. So we have a pretty high field of view on this camera, which means that in order to get the most of it without seeing our standoffs or top plate in view, we've got to push the camera fairly far forward. Well, that means the camera tends to stick out past the prop line in order to get it out of the props and give us the most field of view. 
but that also means that as soon as you hit something head on, your camera is taking 100% of the impact. So it's all a trade off with the O3 system. You can either have the camera far out there on the front, get no props in view, and run a true X frame for freestyle, but you might smack your camera around and wind up breaking it. Or you can suck the camera back in, deal with some props in view, and if you have a good frame design, you won't have the frame in view, but you're gonna have props in view, but you'll have camera protection. Or you can suck the camera back in and run a dead cat frame, which means that they take these two arms here and kinda move the angle back a little, which means it's not great for freestyle because the geometry is kind of the wrong setup for freestyle and it tends to break easier when you crash because the arms are at more of a straight angle and they take it at more of a 90 degree hit than they do with a freestyle frame. But you won't get any props in view and you know, it's a trade off. So it's all trade offs. Consider the trade offs. You can have camera protection, but no, you know, you're gonna have props in view or you can have camera protection and have a dead cat, but you might break it. Or you can have no props in view and it can be good at freestyle, but you might destroy your camera. All things to consider. The last bit is about this antenna here. This is a chunky dunky antenna. And honestly, it's a little bit flippity floppity too. I'm just gonna put it on here real quick and show you how floppy this antenna really is. It is not very stiff. We are used to straw antennas being fairly stiff on things like the Cadex Vista or Run Cam Link now that Cadex doesn't make the Vista. Anyway, we're used to those being pretty stiff. This is not one of them and it is fairly large and it is large because it actually has two cables coming off of the, the air unit. It has those two there if you can see them. I'll put my thumb behind it because there's actually two antennas inside of here. Now GGI says that it is dual band, dual polarity meaning that it's a 2.4 antenna, 2.4 gigahertz, as well as a 5.8 gigahertz, and it's left-hand polarized as well as right-hand polarized. It's just a whole bunch of weird, and the 2.4 gigahertz, as best anyone can tell after watching a lot of Mads Text videos, is mostly just for the control link. So if you're not gonna be running the DJI remote on this, then don't worry about having to run a 2.4 and 5.8 combined antenna like this. You can pick a replacement antenna up for this for $19 currently. So if you do break it, it's out there. But if you wanna run better antennas or something smaller, you totally can do that. And what you can do is just put two right or two left hand, because most DJI things are left hand polarized on your goggles, two left hand polarized antennas that have UFL connectors will go right on the ports of this thing and you can make them whatever size you want. Just remember if you do that, if you put two left hand polarized 5.8 antennas, you will not be able to use the control link for this thing. So don't ever plan on using the DJI controller, which you maybe shouldn't anyway, because it's a piece of junk. It's a nice controller, but honestly, the radio link has a tendency to fail safe. Whenever you lose video link, it fails safe your quad, which is a problem. And then you can't get it back, which is a problem because you can't return to home. You can't do anything. It will just fall out of the sky. It's not good. It's really, really not good and it fail safes way too soon, it's not good. Just use Express LRS or Crossfire or something trusty because these quads tend to get expensive with this kind of system in them. Just my opinion. Now, when it comes to actually mounting the VTX in the frame, there's some considerations you need to make. There aren't any actual through holes like there were with the Vista. You can see I don't have any through holes on there, and I do have my Express LRS receiver taped to it, but I don't have any through holes. So you can't just run bolts through it and put a nut on the top. There are some 3D prints, but you can see how much excess height I have here, maybe a quarter, just enough for my receiver really, and I have the UFL sticking out of a hole in the top plate. So not very much room. In most cases, you're not gonna have a ton of extra room on top, so 3D prints are kind of hard. What I've actually done for my past couple of O3 Air units is double-sided tape them in with 3M UHB. Just get the heaviest UHB you can get and tape that sucker in. Now what you will need to remember is that it does get hot. It is not yet summertime. None of the people who have reviewed it are in a position to really speak to what it's gonna do in the real world in the summer and how hot it's gonna get. And if that's gonna affect the stickiness of your tape, it might. But I have not had any bad experiences just double-sided taping this in. Now I'm gonna have a particularly unique scenario over the summer when it's 110 degrees where I live and I'm trying to run this air unit. And if that changes, I will absolutely put a sticky pin post 
on this telling you why you shouldn't put tape on it. But for now, in all of my experience, I have just VHB taped this to the frame and been fine. Now you can use screws. There are four screws on all the corners of this VTX. Just like they're on the top, they're also on the bottom. The problem with these screws is they are M1.6 screws, which is not a typical size that you find. It's actually really hard to find. Quadmula, who makes this frame, does actually sell screw kits for M1.6 because they saw this a coming. Uh, but it's kind of hard to find usually. And even if you do find it, there's not a lot of meat. So you put a screw through the bottom plate up into your air unit. And if something jostles it around, there's not a lot of thread meat to hold it on. Those were not designed to hold it onto a frame. It was designed to sit in a slot, not necessarily be screwed down. So currently at the moment, the best thing you can do is stick it to the quad. It might not sound great, but that has worked out in several crashes I have had in 80 degree weather so far. We'll see what it does on 110 and I'll let you know when I know more about that. And last but certainly not least, we need to talk about putting things on the front of your O3 camera. Well, why would you put things on the front of your O3 camera? Mostly because you want to get motion blur. A lot of FPV pilots want motion blur in their freestyle footage. They definitely want it in their cinematic footage. So they will lock their frame rate, which is pretty easy to do with the O3 system. And then they will also lock the shutter speed and they will compensate with things like ND filters. And you can see here that I actually have an ND filter on my O3 camera. I just put that on there. That is a Freewell filter because all of the filters by Freewell for the Avada work for the O3 system. And Freewell was nice enough to send me a bunch of these to start trying out. But the thing you need to consider before you go throwing them on there is that if you want motion blur for recording, you're also gonna get motion blur in your goggles. So if you set the recording to 60 FPS and you lock the shutter speed and you get nice cinematic motion blur and it's gonna make your freestyle footage look great, you're gonna get that motion blur in your goggles, which means that all the nice crispy outlines of the trees are no longer gonna be crispy. They're gonna be muddy. And since you went from 60 FPS, you could have done 120 in the goggles V2, or you could have done 100 FPS in the goggles too. You went down to 60 for all the nice cinematography look. You're actually just doubling your latency because the 120 FPS in the goggles V2 is about 27 milliseconds, but the same frame rate that you record with the camera at is what updates your goggles. So now your goggles are only updating at 60 FPS as well, which means you just bump your latency up to like 54 milliseconds. So have fun flying with your 54 millisecond latency and your ND filter blurring everything you're doing. And that's perfectly fine if you're a cinematic pilot or a long range pilot staying within the limits of the DJI transmission space. 13 some kilometers. If you're staying within that, then it's all good. But if you're a freestyle pilot, you really want to consider what you put on the front of your camera and the settings you're using in your goggles for frame rates. Personally, I leave mine in 120 FPS. I let the shutter speed do what it's going to do. If I want to put an ND filter on there, I will put a small, maybe an ND4, ND8 ND filter on, even if it's a bright sunny day, just for a little hair of blur. And most of the time, I'm going to go with something like a UV or polarized filter instead and not really put any dark glass on there because I still wanna see everything I need to see as a pilot. So consider all of that before you decide to replace your action cam with the O3. I still run a GoPro on mine for those reasons. And that's it. Those are the biggest tips, tricks, downfalls, snake pits, I don't know what else you wanna call them, that I have found when running the O3 system these past few weeks. And hopefully you can avoid some of them and hopefully you can avoid some of the questions like how do I get my OSD to work? How do I mount this thing? Why did I just fry out a, a UART on my on my new O3 air unit? Because I didn't look at the pinout. Please just look at the pinout on everything, everything in FPV. Never, ever, ever, ever trust a manufacturer to pin it out to another manufacturer's spec. Always, every of the times, double check. Sorry, I digress there. It's very, very important. But hopefully you can keep yourself from falling into all those traps with your O3 air unit. And let me know in the comments below if you have one of these, are buying one of these. Do you like sparkling water? Are you a sparkling water fan? Topa Chico, Perrier, other kinds of sparkling water? Personally, I hate sparkling water. I can't stand it. I love water. I drink a lot of water. 
like a gallon a day. I hate sparkling water. My wife loves it. I don't understand it. But if you love it, let me know. Because I just want to kind of do a comparison to people who are buying this and people who love sparkling water in possibly glass containers. Because it seems way fancier than me, somehow. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and it was. If you liked it a lot, feel free to subscribe. And if I've given you something really handy and you feel like giving back, I do have a Patreon or I have Buy Me A Coffee if you're feeling frisky. Go to those things. They're in the description below if you feel like it. And if not, I'll keep making stupid content and rambling about incoherent things because that is what I do. It's fun for me to ramble incoherently. And you've just witnessed it. But until next time, stay greasy. And I'll catch you later. It's mine. My own. My precious.